Welcome to Hope Talks Podcast with Grayson Willis and Pastor Margaret Michael, where you'll hear inspiring stories that are filled with hope and good news in Jesus Christ. You can also search for our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and TuneIn. We would love your feedback and invite you to take a short, anonymous survey. You can find the link to the survey in the show notes. Welcome to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. I'm Grayson Willis. And I'm Pastor Margaret Michael. And I am so excited today um, to have a friend uh, in the studio with us. And yeah, Louise Jennings. Louise, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so Louise has been the director of Kingsway Ministry and has ministered in at least six different jails and prisons um, over the years. And so with her recent stepping down as the executive director, I'm like, I have never had Louise in here to share her story and what God has done in her life and how he has used you, Louise, in such a amazing ways over the years. And so welcome. So glad that you're here and you can share all the details of that transition um, at some point in the broadcast, but we would love to just start out today and hear a little bit about where you grew up when you came to Christ. We could start that way. Right. I was raised in Chesapeake uh, when it was Norfolk County. Okay. And went to school in Deep Creek, the second grade all the way through 12th grade from the same schoolhouse. Oh, <laughs> you don't hear of that anymore, do you? <laughs> No. You might be dating yourself. <laughs> well, I am old. <laughs> uh, I never took an active part in church or anything like that. My parents were not churched. Okay. So uh, occasionally I went to vacation Bible school. Occasionally I went to Sunday school. If I had to dress up, I usually came back home with my shoes in my hand. Mm-hmm. I was a country girl. Yeah. yeah, I went to college, and I almost flunked out my first year, and I decided I wanted to be adventurous, so I took a job on Long Island in New York mm-hmm. for the summer after my first year in college, and I worked with Girl Scouts and camped the whole summer. Oh, wow. wow. And it was great, and I wanted to stay, but my parents thought I needed to go back to school. <laughs> so I, they enrolled me in Chowan, which is now Chowan University. Mm-hmm. Um, and I graduated in 1956 from Chowan, and I went to work with the Suffolk News Herald mm-hmm. as a teletype operator and helped put the newspaper together. And that's a whole other story because they don't do it that way anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that was a fascinating process. It's all process. Obsol- yeah. obsolete. Yeah. Totally. Yes. So everything that I learned in college now is obsolete. (laughs) (laughs) I was married for 17 years, and with drugs and alcohol, I messed that marriage up. Mm. Uh, I had two girls with that marriage, Mm. and uh, I tell everybody my neighbors raised my children. Mm. I didn't. Yeah. But God saw differently. Yeah. And forgave me. I went to church drunk, high on drugs, looking for a man. Mm -hmm. And the man I met was Jesus. Amen. What a testimony. You've given me cold Mm -hmm. chills. Then as a result of that, the man I was really looking for saw the changes in me, Mm -hmm. and he stopped drinking that same year we were married. And then God has a way of knowing what we need and what we don't need. And I think he felt like I did not need to stay in that area. Mm-hmm. That being sober in that area would be hard for me. Yeah. So my new husband was transferred in his work to the Shenandoah Valley. Praise the Lord. So 1975 <laughs> was the beginning of the rest of my life. Mm. At lunch today, we were just talking about how long we've been sober, mm. and in March it will be 49 years. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So I praise the Lord for that. What a testimony. Um, and we came to the valley in 75, and I looked everywhere for a church like the one that I met Jesus mm-hmm. in because when I went to that church, being high and drunk, 
there were people there that met me at the back door as I was going out. It was three women put their arms around me and mm-hmm. told me that Jesus loved me. Amen. And so did they. Amen. And the rest of that week, they showed me that. Mm-hmm. And they invited me back to a covered dish dinner. And then my youngest daughter was with me. Mm-hmm. She just loved that night, and she wanted to go back the next day so that she could be with the youth. Mm -hmm. She had never been accepted with a Christian group with Mm -hmm. youth, so she wanted to go back. And I kept saying, we'll think about it. (laughs) We'll we'll talk about it in the morning. (laughs) Well, Saturday morning, she was ready to go. So I got up, still drinking, and I drove her to the church. And one of those same women was in the parking lot there. And she came over to the car and said, you don't have to sit here and wait for her. Well, the older people that are listening would understand, but I had very little gas. Mm -hmm. I was a working mother. I had a house payment, a car payment, and all of that to do. So I was, uh, at the time, we had to get gas by the numbers on a license plate. Mm -hmm. So it was not my turn to get gas, and I had very little gas, so I wasn't going driving anywhere. And this lady says, well, come on up, go over to my house with me and have a cup of coffee. And I thought, what harm can that do? (laughs) So I I got out of my car, and I went with her. Half of the church was there, and they were having a prayer meeting. I was all right in the middle of it. (laughs) It was during that prayer meeting and I didn't know what it was. There was a chair sitting in the middle of the floor. And I thought they were going to play games like you do at Tupperware parties mm-hmm, or things mm-hmm. like that. And I'm sitting there. And all of a sudden, the words came to me. Louise, if you were to die today, where would you go? Oh, wow. And all of a sudden, I remembered my grandmother telling me, Louise, if you're a good little girl, you'll go to heaven. Mm-hmm. But if you're bad, you're going to hell. Mm-hmm. And you'll wow. burn forever. Mm-hmm. And it's hotter than any fire anybody can build. And I'm looking at that chair, and all of a sudden there's a vision of everything in that room being on fire. And fire was just leaping all around me. And that chair wasn't. That chair was just sitting there just as nice and quiet. Mm. And I don't know whether somebody led me to that chair or how I got there, but I was kneeling at that chair. And I looked, and across the back of that chair had the word Jesus. And I said, if these people really know what they're talking about, and Jesus can really love me the way I am, and he can change me, then I want that life. Mm. Uh, Amen. Amen. And I left there cleaner than I've ever been. Mm. Yeah. I went to my boyfriend's house. (laughs) He says, what in the world happened to you? <laughs> I said, I just met Jesus and I'm going home and I'm going to run around the circle and tell everybody. He says, Honey, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Why? He says, Because they saw you going to the bootleggers. They've seen you, the way you behaved. They've taken care of your children because you weren't physically able to mm-hmm. or mentally able to. And says, They'll think you're crazy and they'll have men in the white coat come get you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> His suggestion was that I go to see somebody that I knew in the neighborhood that went to church Mm. and talk to them and share with them. They would understand. So that's what I did. And then he started going to church with me. And that same year is when we were married in that church. Wow. And it was just amazing what God has done since that time. Mm -hmm. We came to the valley And I thought every church in the valley that said United Methodists across it was going to be like that church. Mm -hmm. And that church was, it was during the Jesus movement. Mm -hmm. And there was tambourines under the seats. There was, I mean, it was just like a lot of the churches are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But coming here in the environment, the farming environment, it wasn't that. And we went probably a half a dozen churches, and I didn't find any that I liked. They were not just not what I was used to. Yeah. And we were at home. We moved. We found a place to live in Harrisonburg. And then in July of 76, we were able to purchase a home in Weir's Cave. And we were there for our first anniversary. 
And this little preacher from across the interstate from where we lived was knocking on our door. I bet he was. <laughs> and, we, and we had John cake off of my tear off of our wedding cake mm-hmm. and coffee. And he sat down with us and had oh, cake and coffee. And we talked and he invited us to a Halloween party at his church. <laughs> <laughs> so we went and we started going regularly to Bethany United mm, Methodist Church. Yeah. And the people there thought we were crazy. They still do. <laughs> 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 but they had never had anybody in their church that was not born there or married in it. Mm. And they'd never had anybody that said they were an alcoholic or a drug addict. And they weren't sure they even wanted us. Mm. But they gave us positions that nobody else wanted. We ended up, my husband was president of the United Methodist Men. Mm -hmm. I was vice president of the United Methodist Women. We were involved with the Businessmen's Fellowship. Mm -hmm. And into anything that Jesus was into, we wanted to be a part of. We ended up as missions coordinators for the church. So anybody that came to the church looking for help, they sent them to us. (laughs) And it was good. Yeah. Preacher preached a sermon. If you're not doing all for the Lord, you should, then come to the altar. Mm -hmm. This was Reverend Jim Harris. Uh And my husband and I, hand in hand, went to the altar. And he looks at us and he says, what in heaven's name could you all be doing (laughs) that you're not already doing? (laughs) I said, I don't know, but God's got something. Yeah. And boy, has he. And yeah. I, I said, whatever it is, I want to be a part of it. And he says, well, I'll pray about it. I'll get back to you. Well, he comes back the next week, and he says, I think the Lord would have you all go to chaplaincy school. He says, there's an industrial and commercial chaplaincy program coming up. And he says, with your permission, I'm going to enroll you all. So we agreed. Then the next day, he comes back, and he tells my husband, he says, I'm supposed to preach at the prison, and he says, I've never done it before. He said, would you like to go with me? Well, they weren't letting women go in there mm-hmm. at that time. Yeah. And uh, he said, mm, I don't know anything about prison. I've been to the jail a couple of times, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll go. And so the rest is history. That mm. was March 1977. My goodness. Was that to Rockingham County? No, or to, that was to uh, Camp no. 8, which is okay. at Linville. Okay. And in fact, today, I saw one of the guys that was in that group that we ministered to Mm. and came by the office just to say hi. Wow. But uh, in 1983, the preacher had moved on, and we had a new one that wasn't really interested in prison ministry. He was interested in ministry, but not prison ministry wasn't his thing. So several of the people in the church talked us into making it a non-profit and naming it mm-hmm. as a ministry. And we didn't have any money to hire anybody to do it, so we prayed about it. And there again, God was faithful. We had $50. The attorney wanted $400 an hour to get it set up. Mm-hmm. And so we prayed some more. Somebody... Uh, knowing what we were doing mission-wise, had come by the house and left a $50 bill on a magnet on my refrigerator door. So we had that $50. And we went to the library at Blue Ridge. We checked out all the books we could on how to form a nonprofit. And we wrote out bylaws, and we did everything that we needed to do. And then we thought, well, we don't know how much it's going to cost us. We took the paperwork that we had, and it was like country come to town. We went to (laughs) Richmond to the office of the State Corporation Commission, and we walked in, and they said, can we help you? I said, maybe. And I told them what we had, and they said, do you have the application? Do you have the paperwork? My husband says, yes. She says, just a minute comes back and said, and I can't remember the man's name, but she says, Mr. Whoever he was, we'll see you now. And we walked right on into the commissioner's office. He asked for the paperwork. My husband handed it to him. 
he sat there and he looked over it and he says, well, that looks good to me. That'll be thirty-five dollars. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. So we gave him fifty dollars, and he gave us change. Uh-huh. Wow! And he says everything will be in the mail Monday, mm. and this was on a Friday. Mm. So we went down and visited my daughter that still lived in the Tidewater area for the weekend, and came back and Monday morning. It was in the mail, and it was all. Uh, Charted as Kingsway Ministries. What we found out after a few years that was not popular with business people and we needed support. So we prayed about it, and the board talked about it, and we renamed it. I think it was uh, 94. We renamed it mm-hmm. Kingsway Prison and Family Outreach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we shorten it when we talk to people and we call it King's Way Outreach. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's just been amazing what God has done with that. Give us some stats. What's some statistics? Maybe even just in the last year. Maybe just Christmas. Like, what does it look like? Where all do you all minister? Uh, right now we're ministering at Augusta Correctional Center. Uh, prior to Christmas, we were ministering there six times a month. Mm-hmm. Now they're getting ready to close Augusta. Yes. And they have uh, shortened the amount of time that we can go out there. Okay. So we will be going out there Saturday night. But we'll go out the first Friday and the fourth Saturday. And I have about 20 volunteers that are cleared to go into the prisons. Mm-hmm. I have... Most of them are statewide cleared, mm-hmm. so they can go into any prison in the state right. of Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. We go regularly to Coffeewood on the second Tuesday night of the month. We work with Cold Springs at Greenville, mm-hmm. but not going inside now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm the chaplain for the women at Rockingham Jail, yeah. and I can also go into Middle River, um, and into uh, what used to be Camp 8, which mm-hmm. is now Harrisonburg Diversion Center. Yeah, yeah. Now, this Christmas, we did 6,000 inmate gifts. Yes. And we did those in uh, Augusta, Coffeewood, Green Rock, which is in Chatham, Virginia, mm-hmm. uh, both units at Cold Springs, the Harrisonburg Diversion Center, Middle River, mm-hmm. and Rockingham. Yeah. And Gemeinschaft, right? And Gemeinschaft. <laughs> and yeah. we work quite a bit with the guys and gals in the Oxford House. Yes. Uh, yeah. um, we did an apple tree program isn't just for the inmates. It's something that I started in 1985 mm-hmm. after the flood that we had mm-hmm. for the children of prison inmates. Mm-hmm. Everybody at that time was helping the people in the flood. Mm -hmm. And those children whose parents were in prison weren't included. Yeah. Uh And we started with that. We started with 13 children. Mm -hmm. Uh How many children do you have now? 179. Wow. Yeah. Now, before COVID, we were doing about 300. Mm -hmm. But there are so many more programs now, and we wait until the deadline of the other programs so that we catch those that go from jail to prison. Mm-hmm. Right. And so our numbers are not quite as much. Right. Now. But yeah. on Christmas Eve night, and I've been doing this for the past 30 years, we go into Augusta and go, we do a church service about Christmas, about mm-hmm. Jesus. And then from that, once they lock them down for the night, we go cell to cell and hand them their gift mm. and wish them a Merry Christmas. Wow. wow. And we weren't able to do it this year, but last year, two of us spent Christmas Day at Coffeewood, mm. and we went from building to building and shook hands with all the inmates mm. and gave them their Christmas bag. Yeah. Wow. No invisible so, people. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. No invisible people. Mm-hmm. It would not have been... I would have chosen, but it has been a remarkable journey. Yeah. yeah. I know that many lives 
um, have been touched because of the ministry of Kingsway um, inside the jails and the prisons. Um, only heaven will tell us those stories. One of the things that we decided, that my husband and I decided when we organized Kingsway, was that we would not take a salary mm. because there were so many people that needed things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they had no place to live. They had no clothes. They had nothing. And my husband retired from Virginia Power so that mm-hmm. we could do this. Mm-hmm. And I kept a part-time job for a couple of years after the ministry was started. In fact, uh, I was the first paid staff member of the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank. Hmm. I helped Phil Grasty get that started. Hmm. I helped with the grant writing to get it started before he opened the warehouse. Hmm. Wow. So wow. it was amazing. Yeah. And then one of the other things that uh, I was on the grassroots for was people helping people. Hmm. Yeah, that's another good one. So you know, God has used me. I've been willing yeah. for him to use me. Yeah. However, I thought um, I was invited to go overseas and do ministry. And uh, I was with the Coalition of Prison Evangelists. And I told God I'd go anywhere he wanted me to go, as long as I didn't have to fly. <laughs> 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 well, you don't go to England <laughs> walking. That's right. <laughs> so when they told me they wanted me to be on the team going to England. I said, I can't go. I don't have wings. They said, the airplane does. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, and I was really happy with the trip. We went into all the prisons in England. Uh, we divided. It was 48 of us that went, and we divided in groups of four. And at the same time, on one, one day, we had a program going on in every prison in the country of England. Wow. Wow. And it was just amazing. Coming back, flying back, somebody that wasn't going to fly got a window seat. <laughs> looking, at, looking out the window, and I'm saying, God, this is beautiful. You paint beautiful pictures. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I thought, hmm, okay, God, I'll go anywhere you want me to go as long as I can speak their language. Yeah. Well, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So the next year, I got an invitation to go to Estonia. Mm. Well, I don't speak Estonian. (laughs) I don't speak Russian. I don't speak any of those languages. But I went. Mm. And I went from Estonia to Latvia. And I've been back to Latvia about 11 times. Wow. And to Romania and to Russia and to Scotland. Mm. So I've been in the prisons all over. Yes, you have. All over Europe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's that's been a real blessing, too. God has bigger things for us planned than we can think or imagine, right? Exactly. That's what I was thinking about when you were talking about the different places that you had been. And also, when we're surrendered, your life sounds like a life of surrender. God takes (laughs) us out of our comfort zone. You said you didn't want to fly or you didn't want to go to a country that you didn't speak the language, but God used you in those places. Right. right. Yeah. And I had been a member of the Coalition of Prison Evangelists, and last year they chose to disband. Mm-hmm. But I have met some marvelous people in prison ministry all over the world. I am sure you ha- you have. And I'm just thinking about, you know, There's so many unknowns when we say yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, when we surrender, he can do uh, more than we could ever imagine. And just to think about even like flying, you know, you allowed (laughs) your fear to be overcome of that. And when the Lord um, lives in us, he can give us what we need to do the things we thought we never could. He does it through us. It's not that we do it in our own strength, but um, you may have never done that without Jesus, but Christ in you um, gives us that strength and the power to do what he calls us to. Well, I thought when my husband passed away in 2012 that all of this would end, that, you know, I wouldn't have anything to do, and Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to do it without him Mm -hmm. because he was actually the one that started it. Mm -hmm. And the first job, 
year or so, you know, was the main person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when I said that I wasn't coming back into the men's prison anymore, it's amazing the numbers of cards and letters that I got from the men in prison mm-hmm. saying, Mom, when are you coming back? Wow. wow. So I couldn't not go back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, you can't say no to that. Yeah, it's, you're, I'm always intrigued when I talk to you just to hear the stories of how God has used you in many ways. And now you've, you've taken a step back at Kingsway and, you might want to just share with those that are listening today who's kind of taken your place and what your title is these days. <laughs> the board just named me as Director Emeritus. Mm. What an honor. I, I wasn't yeah. really that smart. I had to look it up to see what they had <laughs> told me. But Paula Ford is taking over as director, mm-hmm. and I'm working through about 40 years of paperwork <laughs> and just stuff in general that people have uh, given me or books of uh, just 40 years of stuff. Yeah. Mm. And I've got that in boxes and a desk sitting in the back at Kingsway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told them I will go through those and see what needs to be shredded, mm-hmm. what needs to be given to somebody else or what needs to be saved yeah. for the ministry. Yeah. And I'm pulling out everything, dealing with the history. And as of today, yeah. I have an intern that's coming in and work with me to write a book. Wow. Nice. Oh, I'm so glad. So I've that's been so wanting good. to do that, but just couldn't find time. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now when I plow through all of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, we were talking, um, Louise and I were talking before the, show and i said well louise do you have files or piles and she immediately said she had piles and we connected <laughs> we connected in a deep place in our heart right mm-hmm. um, i know what it's like to go through piles and boxes of things that um they just need to be filtered through and uh, i'm grateful <laughs> that you um, have had been able to hand it off paula is the woman for the job and probably you'll be hearing from her one of these days um on the podcast and have nine volunteers that work in the office, mm-hmm. so she's not by herself. It's, yeah. it's no longer a little mom and pop type yeah. ministry. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah, bigger than we ever dreamed it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Louise, thank you for joining us today on Hope Talks and sharing your testimony and how God's used you in a mighty way and is still using you. Anything in closing that you would like to share, either that we haven't asked you already or that you haven't shared already? I just hope that the people that could support Kingsway Mm -hmm. will continue to do so. Yeah, Because it's not about me. That's right. That's that's exactly right. That's a good word. So tell us, um, what is the best way for them to contact you or contact Paula? We are in the process of changing the email address so that Paula will be able to receive it too. But right now, the email address is info Mm -hmm. at kingswayoutreach.org. Okay, very good. And the phone number is 540-433-5658. And you are located there in the Dukes Plaza. 2217. South Main. That's right. Plaza. Yeah. We also have a service, a fellowship service, mm-hmm. at 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Everybody is welcome. Mm-hmm. We have it as a 18 and older service mm-hmm. so that anybody can come regardless yes, right. of their crime or they don't have to dress up and say, yeah. I'm going to church. That's because right. Because we don't right. call it church. Yeah. Right. But you worship the we Lord there. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 And if we don't have somebody that's playing music and singing for us, we have the DVDs mm-hmm. and we sing along with those. Right. There you yeah. go. Yeah. We have a good minister, or, and we have several that come in that minister also. That's right. That's good. Well, Louise, it's been great to have you. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. We pray that as you've listened to Louise Jennings' testimony today, that it truly has been a half hour of hope for your life. 
May God bless. Hope Talks is sponsored by Church of the Nazarene Harrisonburg in partnership with Sunshine Ministries. Thanks for listening to today's podcast of Hope Talks. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe for updates and the latest episodes. Also, if you're in the Harrisonburg, Rockingham County area, we invite you to listen on the radio each Sunday at noon on 1470 AM or 102.1 FM WBTX.